Hi everybody, it's Kasha Dupuy from the Niagara on the Lake Public Library. Um, welcome back if you're joining us again. Um, my name, well I already said my name, <laughs> oh dear, one of these days. Um, thanks for joining us if you're here um, for this week's NOTL Library Live uh, Create with Kasha. My name's Kasha um, and we are here to learn about um, some art history. We're here to do some painting um, and we're here to have fun. So this is, uh, can you believe it, week 15 of our Create with Kasha's. Um, and this is actually one of our uh, summer 2020 art history series um, that we're kind of tying into our summer reading program, which is um, in our third week, actually. Um, so we are going to be learning about an artist named Mark Rothko. Um, and then we're going to be exploring um, the way that color and emotion work together. Um, and we're gonna be making some mini Rothko paintings, yeah. Uh, Mark Rothko, once you see the paintings, you, you'll be like, oh, I've seen those before. He's very popular. Um, his paintings actually were selling for a lot of money um, a couple years, well, over the last years, um, like in the millions. Yeah, he's very popular. Um, and the way he explores color is actually really interesting too. So I am going to flip over to a couple of things. Actually, you know what? Not yet, because before we get over to... Um, starting this. Um, I just want to do, to show you um, the materials. We do another kind of material run through. So let me just, we'll do this and we'll transition. And yet we have a new camera. So it might be a little bit wonky. We were just talking that it's a little bit fish-eyed this way, but that's okay. It's all, only my paints. So if you're going to be joining us to paint today, um, what you're going to need is a covered surface. So I have my watercolor paper under here, covers my big table. And this is so that it protects my table. Um, you're going to need something to paint on. So I have my watercolor paper sheet here. We're actually going to cut it into four sections or six if you want to make, or eight, you can make as many as you like. You want to make sure that you have some clothes that you don't mind getting paint on. Um, you're going to need paints, of course. Now for this week's, you don't need to have any certain color of paint. You can have whatever color paint you want. So I have all the colors um, that I was working with this morning right here. So I have two different kinds of greens. I have a red, I have a brown. I have a kind of like purpley red. I have some black, which I just got on my finger. Um, I have some blue, I have some yellow, and I have some white. So if you join us for the basics um, reminder, kind of refresher course a couple weeks ago, um, I showed you that you can make pretty much any color on the rainbow from just red, yellow, and blue, right? So don't worry if you only have a few colors. Um, we can mix any of the ones that you want to use, and you can put them in your artwork. You're also going to need a cloth, just like this. Um, you're going to need water to wash your brush. You're going to need brushes to paint with, of course, and I have my trusty three right here. I have my um, medium flat, kind of like a small flat square brush. I have my fine point round brush, although it's not really much of a fine point anymore. It's kind of fuzzy. I kind of like it that way. And then I have my big fuzzy brush for covering big spaces. Um, and this brush is actually gonna be really good for today's uh, Create with Kasha because it gives you a nice soft texture, which you can probably see in that one. Um, you're also going to need some tape. It can be masking tape, it can be painter's tape, whatever you'd like. You're going to need some pastels or crayons. So I have these Crayola ones here. Um, and then one thing I forgot to mention in the graphic, um, but if you have it, that would be awesome, is to get a pair of scissors. Because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be cutting the paper. Um, and trust me, it's much easier to do with some scissors, okay? Now I'm just looking at my containers here. I realize I don't have my white pastel. So uh, you know what I'm going to do. Oh, there it is. I see it. If you don't have pastels um, that are oil, you can also use chalk pastels or crayons. Yeah, anything that you can kind of scribble with would be a good thing to have for this project. Okay, so let's get started by I'll show you a little bit more about these guys. So these are inspired by an artist named Mark Rothko, and he was an abstract expressionist. Um, and he really wanted to paint human emotions. He wanted to paint how we feel. And he felt the best way to do that was through colors. So these two aren't done. This is the green tape, and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna use it. But when you look at, say, this one, what kind of emotions do you feel? Is it like, does it make you angry? Does it make you kind of feel calm? I feel this one's kind of calm. It's like a sunshine right here, and then the morning when it's like everything's waking up. Um, how about this one? How would this one maybe make you feel? Maybe happy, maybe joyful. 
Um, maybe with the red and the purple, it may make you feel angry. Never know. Um, how about this one? Look at the colors in there. How might this one make you feel? Mm, blues and grays and blacks, maybe kind of gloomy, kind of glum, maybe kind of sad. Um, and how about this one? I don't know. Well, we've got a little bit of brown in here. We've got some pretty strong blacks and grays. It could also be sad in a different way. Um, but we can also, also change this to make it look um, maybe to angry or you know, frightened or scared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move these over here because we're going to decorate them up afterwards. I'm just going to put them right there by my tape. Um, and I'm going to show you a couple slides that I have um, that I actually found online and they were pretty awesome. Um, they kind of show you different color combinations that go with different feelings. So I have two slides and this is the positive feeling slide. So these are like good emotions, right? All emotions are good. Let me rephrase that. It's good and healthy for you to feel everything. Um, but these are kind of the happy and joyful and positive ones. So we have joy, which is right here. The first three colors. I look at that and I, I think joy too. Um, there's gratitude. I never really thought I would, you know, know what gratitude would look like as a color, but those kind of colors work with it. Gratitude is when you're thankful for something. Yeah, so I kind of thought, oh, if someone gave me, say, flowers, I'd be like, oh, thank you. And I guess those colors would kind of come to mind. Um, pride is a good one. You feel it, you're feeling like, you know, strong and kind of um, proud of yourself. So those are red and bright colors of yellow and golds. Um, what's another one that I thought was, oh, relief. Ah, so relief and calm and that moment of, ah, those kind of colors in here. So the turquoise and the blue and all that kind of stuff, that makes me think of relief too. So these are some color combinations that can help us in our art today um, so that you can create some emotions on your paper. So let's go to the next one. We have some negative emotions here. So like I said, all emotions are good to feel. There are positive emotions and negative emotions, but they're all good for us to feel. Um, but these are some like hate and fear and um, anger and shame and disappointment. One that I thought was kind of interesting um, was the remorse kind of color here with the purples at the very end. It's kind of interesting because like when you're when you're remorseful, you're kind of sad about something. You kind of feel guilty that you did it. Um, those kind of colors kind of encompass that, right? In my head anyway, maybe you have a totally different picture of what some of those colors could be or what some of those emotions would look like. Um, anger and hate. Yeah, lots of blacks and browns and blues and reds. Red is often a color um, that we associate with anger, right? If you've seen uh, the movie Inside Out, think about those. Um, red, anger is red. Disgust is green. Um, sadness is blue. Joy is yellow. I think there's one more. Purple. Oh, it's fear. Yeah. See, I remember. We just watched that movie. <laughs> okay. So we look at those emotions. So let's get some ideas for your artwork today. And I'm going to switch back over to um, our screen here. Oops, let's get that one out of here. There we go. And we're going to get started. Yeah, so get some ideas from those previous slides um, and how you want to make your emotions kind of take place and come to be on paper. So I have my paper here. The first thing we're going to do is I'm going to fold it in half just like this. And because I'm using a thicker paper, um, I'm going to cut it right after I fold it. Because if I, if I fold it the other way, it's going to get all kind of weird. So I'm just going to cut right on the center line here with my scissors. And that's all we're going to really use the scissors for today is just cutting smaller pieces of our painting, of our canvas. A canvas can be anything you paint on, actually. So paper could be a canvas. A rag could be a canvas I could paint on here. Cardboard. Um, so when I say canvas, I don't actually mean, you know, a regular canvas that you'd hang on the wall. I just mean what you'd be painting on, which can be anything. Uh, your ground can be the canvas, right? So then I'm going to fold these in half, and I'm going to make four today. If you want to make six, you can. If you want to make eight, you can. If you um, want to make, you know, 20 or 30 different things, of course you can. These are your artwork to make, right? These are your experiments to do. So today's um, Create with Kasha is also a little bit different than some of our other ones. Um, this one, since we're learning about Mark Rothko and we're looking at how he made artwork, this is more of an exploratory kind of art. So it's not going to look like a certain thing. It's not, you know, we're not here to paint a fish and it has to look like a fish. We're here to kind of experiment and see what looks cool and make a whole bunch of things 
um, because it's called a study, right? We're kind of studying color and emotion and we're studying how to use our paint and how to use our materials. So I have four of these here. I'm going to start with one and put the other ones there. Um, and then what we're going to do next, what you're going to do if you like, um, you don't have to because some of the ones that I made here have tape on them and some of the ones don't. Mark Rothko used a lot of rectangles in his artwork and they're like blocks of color. Um, and he wanted them to be fuzzy. He wanted them to kind of look blurry and soft because he wanted you to get lost in these images. He wanted you to get lost in these emotions um, that he's trying to put on canvas. Um, the cool thing too about Mark, Mark Rothko's paintings, we're making mini ones. This is maybe like you know, four inches by six inches. Mark Rothko's paintings were huge, like 20 feet by like 10 feet you know, or like three meters by five meters, really, really big. Yeah, really big, because he wanted you to get lost in them. He wanted them to be so big um, that you get lost in how they make you feel, which is really kind of like emotions, right? Um, you know, when you're feeling really angry or really sad, you kind of get lost in it. It's so big and it feels so big. And that's what he wanted to show in his artwork. Okay, so back to this though. <laughs> so he used lots of uh, rectangles in his art, just like this. I didn't use any tape on these ones, but you get the same idea. These ones, I'll show you on one of these, after we take the tape off, we get these really cool kind of rectangles. We can leave them blank, um, or later on we can go in with oil pastels, and I'll show you what we can do with those too, okay? So if you'd like to put some of these rectangles on, what you're going to do is take some tape, and I only have really thick tape. If you have thinner tape, that's okay too. And I kind of roughly measure so it fits. And Mark Rothko often had a border around his paintings. So if I look at this one here, um, yep, I've got rectangles, but he also had a border that he just painted. It wasn't anything too precise, kind of left it soft. Um, so that is what you want to kind of think about when you're measuring so that your tape fits inside just like that. Now, I don't want a big white space. I'm actually going to take my scissors again and I'm going to cut some smaller rectangles. And I'm going to, you know what, I'm going to put one here. And then I'm going to put, I'm going to make a really thin one, just like that. Cutting tape is sometimes a little bit tricky, so take your time. I'm going to put another one here. Okay. And you know what, maybe this piece of carb, or this piece of tape, I'm going to put up here. Maybe right in the middle. We'll see what that turns into. Now, when I'm putting my tape down, I don't have a real set idea of exactly what's going to happen. We're just going to experiment and see. So I'm going to leave these two blank and I put tape on these two and wherever the tape is, you're going to have a white space that you can either paint in later or do with some pastels. So let's start with this one. And you're going to get your brushes and your paint ready. And I'm going to use probably my big brush most of the time. What I'm going to do first is you're going to take a little bit of water and I'm just going to pick a spot and paint some water over that whole area. If you put a lot of water around the tape, you'll get these really cool like bleeding marks, which bleeding is not like human bleeding or anything. It's like when the paint kind of mixes into the paint beside it and you get these really cool like softness, um, soft areas. So I want that in my paints today. And what emotion am I gonna look for? I'm gonna go with relief, because that's one I was thinking of from the last um, graphic I showed you. So relief had some teals, some greens, and some white. So I'm gonna do that, make like a rectangle here. You know what, maybe I'm gonna take a little bit more water on my brush and do some more down here. I'm gonna wash my brush a little bit. I'm gonna take a little bit of blue, mix a color. I want it to be lighter, so let's take some more white, just like this, and blend it in, just like that. Maybe I'll put a stripe up there. And Roth, Mark Rothko always painted in stripes and rectangles. Not the whole time. You know, some of his artwork, um, he evolved, right? So then that's good, because that means you're not stuck to one thing for your whole life. That would be kind of boring, right? If we had to do the same thing day in, day out. Like, unless you absolutely love it, that can get very boring. Um, so I'm thinking, I'm going to add just a little bit of yellow. And this is where the experimenting part can come in on your side. And the more, ooh, do you see what happened? It kind of ran with the water. And for some people, it's okay if it is, this is hard to do, to let your paint run and look all crazy and you don't have much control. 
that's okay to do. It's good for you. <laughs> okay. So I'm actually happy with that one. So I blended in some greens and some blues and I put some yellow there, which bled up top, which I like. And then I took my blue and I kind of made a border. You know what? I'm going to take this one over here and I'm going to let that one dry. If you have a lot of paint here, you can use your regular paper towel to just kind of get some of it off just like that. And then let's go on to the next one. So let's think of another emotion. So we did a positive emotion, like relief. Um, let's do maybe anger. So what colors do you guys think of it when you think of anger? I think of red. So I'm gonna put some water here and I'm gonna take some of my red paint and I'm going to just do some red. And I'm kind of making a rough rectangle there, just like so. Now if you're really, really angry, um, you know, maybe it's a deep red. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this purple and I'm gonna blend just a little bit in here and I'm gonna make maybe, I need some more water here. I'm gonna maybe make a border with this color. Hmm. Now if you're thinking like, you're so, you know, things are on fire, you're so angry, what colors are in fire? They can be yellow, they can also be orange. So I'm gonna make a little bit of orange and I'm gonna blend that in right here. Now, I started up making this angry. I wouldn't say, it, I don't know, it doesn't really feel angry to me. Maybe I need something darker. Maybe I need like a black. So I'm gonna take a little bit of black and maybe I'm gonna put like a black line there. Maybe I'm gonna put a black line there. And see how everything is kind of blending and bleeding together? Yeah, that kind of works, I like it. Maybe I'll make a little rectangle inside that one, just like so. Okay, so I think I'm done with that one, I think. The other cool thing you can do is when the water and paint is running, you can kind of pick it up and let it move around. You know what this one actually looks like to me? This one looks like frustration, it looks frustrating. You know, you're kind of a mix of angry and sad and you don't know how to feel, right? Frustrating is, being frustrated is a very big emotion. So I'm gonna leave that one and that's gonna be my frustrated. So I'm gonna move that one over here. I'm gonna take my cloth, clean up my space. Um, let's think, what's another emotion? Oh look, I already got some green on that. I'm just gonna take my brush and move that in. Let's move, get some water on there. And my water has some color in it already, that's okay. Um, Mark Rothko um, often made his colors a little gray or a little, you know, tinged with color so they weren't true regular colors. He wanted them to kind of look messy and complicated. Um, so he often had different shades um, and overlapping colors in his artwork to make it more complicated and make you feel um, the different emotions that are hidden in there, right? So you know what? I'm going to make a joyful one. I'm going to take some yellow. I'm gonna make a big yellow floating rectangle right there. And you know what, maybe I'll put another one there. And then what was, if you can think back, I think green and purple were in joy. So I'm gonna take some of this really bright green with some water and I'm gonna do a line right here, maybe a little thicker. And then you know what, maybe I'm gonna make a lighter green, just like so. Might not be that different. We'll add a little bit of this in here. There we go. And look at the, that really cool like bleeding that happens. Yeah, so that bleeding is when the colors mix into their colors and it looks really pretty and soft, which is just like what Mark Rothko went for in his art. So when I thought of joy um, in that other screen that I showed you that, that um, slide, there was purple in there. And I'm gonna make kind of like a bluey purple because it's a very calming, happy color. It's like periwinkle. So I'm gonna make the border this color. Now you don't have to be following along exactly with me. This is just for you to get ideas to make your own work, right? You make your own artwork. You don't have to be exactly copying what I'm doing at all. No, no, no. The awesome and the fun part comes in you making your own stuff. So I don't know, that looks pretty joyful to me. Plus, remember, we can add in some other colors and some other lines um, when we do our next layer with the pastels. 
So now this one, I'm gonna do a sad. Let's try to do a sad. So what colors can we think of with sad? There's gray and there's blue and there's black. So this time, the last couple ones I've done a border last. I'm actually gonna do a border first. We'll see what kind of effect we get when we do the border first, like so. Okay, so I made my border. I'm gonna put some extra water on it so it will bleed a little bit more. And then I'm going to put some water inside here. Ooh, look it. So this is actually another thing that Mark Rothko did, is he layered and overlapped the colors. And he let them kind of blend together and he thought very carefully about where he wanted stuff, but then he also let it kind of go on its own too. Um, so that's starting to look kind of sad. Maybe if you're crying, what color do you think of when you think of tears? Kind of blue, right? And I don't want it to be a bright, like sunny ocean blue. I want it to be like a sad blue. So I'm gonna take a little bit of black and a little bit of white and make it a gray blue. And I'm gonna put, ooh, a layer right there. That's a sad looking blue. Wow. Okay, I'm gonna take some more. Make this one even darker. Maybe different layers of sad. There we go. Um, also, because we're doing all these sad, you know, um, things right now, um, teardrops, right? They fall down and they drop. So maybe what I'll do is I'll lift this up. I'm not sure if you can see it, but it's starting to kind of bleed forward that way. Yeah, that'll be sad. Now, my border that I put on kind of went away. I'm going to take some more black and I'm just going to make it strong again. And we'll see what happens because the paper's wet. So it won't just stay the way it is. It will kind of move and continue to, to grow and change shape. And if we wanted to do that even more, just put a little bit more water on top. Okay. So I think that looks pretty sad. What do you guys think? Hmm. Okay. So I've done my four canvases. Now, again, like I mentioned, this is something that you can have fun with and they don't have to be done at the exact same time as mine. Um, you can take as many time, as much time as you want to do this. This one is kind of more of a, you know, just get lost in it for a couple minutes for, a couple, for you know, half an hour or so. Just let your brain kind of like play with stuff and see what you can make. So these are still drying. So while they're drying, let's go to these ones and I'll show you some techniques to make these look even cooler. So this one I thought kind of looked like joy, right? So other joyful kind of bright colors would be something like these. So there's oranges and there's reds and there's purples um, or happiness. Maybe that's happiness. So if it's really happy, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take this yellow. I'm going to fill in that space there. You know what? Maybe I'm going to put a little bit of this and blend it in. And maybe I want to add some lines over here and make that kind of stand out. Maybe I want to take some orange and do this one, maybe the top of this rectangle orange, and I can blend them together like this. Yep. And if you don't like a line, like say I don't really like that, guess what? You can take another color and blend it like this. Yeah. Kind of make it look like it's all one piece. And again, there is not really any rhyme or reason. I did not really... You know, I thought about this obviously ahead of time, but I didn't do any extra planning for this because some of the best stuff happens when you just put it on, right? Okay, so maybe that makes me think of happy. Yeah, excitement. Ooh, actually, you know what? With the yellow, it kind of looks very exciting. Okay. Awesome. So what do you guys think? Does it look exciting? I think it looks pretty exciting. Kind of looks like a cake. And I get excited about cake. If anyone knows me, I love cake. So there we go. We have exciting. Um, so let's do a sad one or maybe a, a remorseful one. I think this is more sad or upset. Um, I kind of like the way that this looks, but maybe I'm just going to take my blue and add in another texture line here. Maybe just make those blue lines look a little stronger. And I can take my white, maybe add in, I can make that kind of stand out more, like so. 
You can blend those together to make like an in-between light blue. Okay, so maybe that's sad. You know what I haven't added in yet? Any black. I'm gonna add a little bit of black in there, just like so. Ooh, I like that. Yep, that looks kind of sad to me. I don't know about you guys. Okay, so we have like a sad. Okay, um, what about this one? Now, I thought this could also be sad, but say it's actually like a sad angry. Hmm, so what I'm gonna do is actually add some red. So I'm gonna turn it this way. I don't know why. I'm just gonna make a big red rectangle in the middle. And then I'm gonna take some more black and I'll work some black through that. Ooh, look at that line. That line work made it look really, um, you know, kind of angry lines, right? Like, argh, kind of thing. Some orange down here. Awesome. That looks pretty angry to me. Well, it looks kind of like a annoyed angry, you know? Hmm, I like that. So I have a little bit of brown in here. Let's just bring up some of that brown too. Okay. Yeah, I would say that's more of an annoyed to my to my uh, um, eyes anyway. Here we go. I'll we'll make it look a little darker. Okay, there's like that's annoyed. That could be annoyed. I don't know about you guys, but I think that looks pretty annoyed. Um, this one. Now let's see. This is where we had the tape, right? I haven't taken the tape off my other ones yet because they're still drying. Um, but let's see. This one I thought of as relief or calm. So to me, this kind of looks like a beach. I love the beach, so I'm a little jealous of this right now. <laughs> it's a beach that looks like a cloud in the sky. This kind of looks like grass. So maybe I'm just gonna do some more blue, like there. But then I'm gonna kind of make sure it does, the white doesn't go away because I like that. So I'm gonna take some of this and I'm gonna blend this blue up in the white, just like so. Yeah, if you have white crayons or white pastels, they can definitely help you in some of these areas, make things look like a little um, extra textured. And see that? There's a little bit of blue left on my white pastel, and I put it back up on there. Um, you know what? I'm really going to put a little bit of that there. And I haven't used green yet, so maybe we'll just add a bit of green. That looks pretty calm. I like that. Maybe I'll add. I kind of want this warm yellow. Just like so. What do you think? Calm? Relaxing? Maybe it's relaxed. That's the color we're going with today. That one kind of looks relaxed. Whoops. Oh dear. Sometimes it happens. Oh, but now look, I can use the whole side of my pastel. Yeah, I'd say that looks pretty cool and relaxed. Okay. Calm. Okay. So, so far, let's move my paints out of the way because we're done with these ones. Um, we have, I've made so far, kind of like, um, I didn't say it was angry, annoyed, calm, kind of like a, maybe like a sad, mad, like I guess frustrated too would be a good one. And then this one was excitement because it reminds me of cake. So let's see the other ones that I have. So let's see if any of these are dry yet. And even if they're not dry, that's okay. So this one. I thought of could be, I forget what it was. Now let's see what I said it was. I think it was joy. No, joy was over here. Hmm, like restful, could be restful. It's very similar to this one actually. I wonder how I could change it. Maybe I can make this look calm by adding in some purple. Yeah, let's add some purple. Cause I like how it's blending here and it's really soft. Um, so I'm gonna make this purple rectangle. Uh, purple can be a very common color. And then you know what? I'm going to add a little bit of blue in here. And then I'm going to take my white and I'm going to blend them together. Just like that. And sorry if the camera's moving. Sometimes when we're doing art, there's a lot of movement involved. And even if we're feeling stuff, right? There's a lot of movement involved. Um, ooh, I like that. Ooh, I like that one. Mm -hmm. I'm going to call this one like relaxed, just like so. Can I get another pencil? Uh, sure, one second. There's one right here. So that one I would say look kind of relaxed. And then hmm, this one could be, yep, this one I thought could be frustrated. So let's take off this tape and take a look. 
Mm -hmm. Yep. You know what? I kind of like the green in there. Maybe that's what made, made it look so good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my green pastel, wherever I put it. And this green pastel is pretty green. I don't know if I want it that green. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press lightly with it. And then I'm going to press some yellow over top. And I have this warm yellow. And I want it to be kind of bright too, I'm noticing. So I'm going to put some of that on there. And then, you know what? Maybe this time I'm actually just going to blend with the yellow. Just like so. And if you're using oil pastels, you don't really have to worry about it drying. Um, drying, drying, sorry. You can just do it while it's wet. Yeah, I kind of like that one. And then I'm going to use this to put in a black line, maybe a couple of black lines, because if you're frustrated, you hit like barriers, right, that you don't know how to pass. So maybe these little black things are like the walls that you have, you feel like you can't get through. Yeah, I would say that maybe looks frustrated, just like so. I'm going to put a quick border around this one. So, yes, this is very fun. I find this very fun. And it's very good for you to use your brain in different ways so that you find different ways of making art that actually look cool. And you don't always have to know what you're going to do, right? You can just start experimenting. I didn't know that I would like that green um, until I took off that tape. And I was like, oh, I like the green there. So that one's frustrated or kind of confused. Maybe that's confused. Okay, you don't actually have to put anything on these if you don't want to. So this one's very sad. Um, this one I did as like a sad, um, you know. So you know what all I'm going to do is put some white to kind of straighten up some of these lines here. And this is called abstract art. So it's not supposed to really look like anything. It kind of allows our brain to make it up as we go. Our brain can find whatever we want to find in it. And everyone's brain will find something different. Yeah, I'm going to leave that one as it is. It's like sad. It's like looking through on a rainy day when you want to go play outside. It looks kind of like a window, but you can't because you're stuck inside, so you're sad, right? And then for my last one is joy. Now, one little thing, too. Um, if it's still wet, like right here, and you want it to be dry, you don't want it to go anymore, um, take your cloth or take your paper towel. Carefully put it on top. Just give it a few quick little blots like this, and it will dry. It'll be even drier. Like, that's still a little bit wet, but that'll be okay. So for joy, I want bright colors. I want, like, yellows and purples. That green's a little bit too bright for me. Maybe I want to do some of this yellow instead. And what I would do is just add maybe some exciting marks like that. Make that yellow seem even brighter with, like, a uh, few marks like that through it. You know what? I could probably even make this yellow, the screen, look even brighter by doing that. Oh, yeah, I like that. That looks like joy. It's joyful and fun. Exciting. Okay, so let's go through. Wait, I'm not done this one yet. <laughs> yep, I like that. Okay. No, not yet. And that's a cool thing about art, too. There we go, that looks like soft and glowy. Like exciting and it's glowing and it's beautiful. So that's the cool thing about this artwork too is that you can kind of, it doesn't have to be done until you think it's done. And even if you think it's done, if you're like me, you're like, mm, it still needs something. What does it need? Hmm, sometimes it needs white, right? So let's go through the emotions that I made and let me know if you feel the same kind of way. So I have joyful here. Um, we have kind of sad here. I got frustrated or kind of confused. I'm not sure which one I feel like that looks like yet. Um, I also made like a, um, it's like an angry, I guess. I always forget what it is. Uh, this one is like another sad, maybe a little bit more sad or less sad. Um, maybe this is crying. I'm not sure. This one's excited. This one was calm. This one was restful. Yeah. These are mini Mark Rothko inspired paintings that you can make as many as you wish to explore all the different emotions that you can create with color. It's a really fun project. So thank you all for joining me today. I hope you had fun and I hope you do have fun with these because this is the fun stuff about art. This is where magic can happen and this is where you learn things and try things and make things you never thought you could. Um, scribbles are important. 
testing out things is important. Putting splashes of paint is important for you to learn not only how to use your material, but help you get stuff out of your brain. It's actually very good for you to experiment with this kind of stuff. So yes, thank you for joining me today. And I hope you had fun with this. I had fun with this. Um, if you were only able to stay part of the time, don't worry. Um, we will be uploading this video to our YouTube channel afterwards. You can watch it as many times as you want. Make as many different colors, combinations as you like. I'm inspired by artist Mark Rothko. Um, if you have any questions or comments or feedback or suggestions, please send me an email, kdupuis at notlpl.org. So k-d-u-p-u-i-s at notlpl.org. Um, and in the meantime, oh, you know what? I'll give you a little sneak peek of something that's gonna be coming up tomorrow. This, we have some cool videos on how to make this tomorrow. So dragon skin made from tree bark. That's coming tomorrow. Um, but in the meantime, I hope you have a rest, a wonderful rest of your Monday afternoon. And we will see you next week for week uh, 15, 15 or 16, oh my goodness, of NOTL Library Live, Create with Kasha. Thanks for joining me. Enjoy the rest of your day and happy creating. Bye.